wanted to talk about this story that I saw. It's about Reverend Greta Vosper. She's a pastor with the United Church, and over time as she's pastoring, she lost her faith. She just genuinely lost her faith in God. As a pastor, she as lost her faith. As a pastor, okay. and to the point that she doesn't even believe there is a God anymore. So oh. we're not talking about somebody who's struggling with their faith. Literally, she says, there is no God. Mm -hmm. And you know, the United Church has really been known for trying to be inclusive mm -hmm. and, and, and welcome everyone in. So now they're all of a sudden going, well, how do we reject this person, but yet, the question is, can you be a pastor and lead a congregation of a, of a Christian denomination when you don't believe that a God exists? Yeah, that's a big question. I think as a member, I would be questioning, right? Like your pastor is supposed to be your shepherd and they're supposed to be able to direct you when you have, you know, faith questions when you're going through horrible seasons in your life and you're wondering where God is. And if she's saying, I don't even know where God is, then I think that would be of concern to me. And then my, I guess my other question is, because I've heard this story a number of times, is why does she cling on to this faith and this church that believes that Jesus is our savior? Why would you cling to that? Well, it basically says that she's leading the church, de-emphasizing questions of the supernatural while stressing community based, a community based on secular values of inclusiveness and compassion. So it seems like she feels like she's creating, she's still creating that place for people. She's still passionate about people, but she just doesn't believe in God. Well, I'm thinking, why don't you go to a different church? Or why don't, don't you just believe in God create or? a group, like a hangout? You know what I mean? That sounds more like a hangout or like getting some friends together to talk, <laughs> as opposed to a church. Again, if we like, and I guess the idea is that we have this idea of a pastor, right? Like yes. the pastor We're is supposed Christians. to be a shepherd and we all agree going in that we all believe in Jesus Christ. So if we come in with that understanding, then we can go from there. But if that is not the basis of her belief, then I think that's a group. That's not a church. Yes. And she says that it's time the Christian church gave up on the idolatry of a theistic God, which is just a shocking thing to say. And again, like instead of leaving, like you said, the church, she's trying to change it from the inside out. And of course, the United Church has gone through so many changes, but this really seems okay, like beyond read the, the pale. Read that quote again. It is, she says it is time that the Christian church gave up on the idolatry of a theistic God. Okay, Christian. <laughs> Christian. Like they're, like they're, yeah. It does seem Christian to kind of like go church. against just common sense. Right, just common sense. Like, if you don't want to be a Christian, don't lead a Christian church. Right. I don't know. Christian, I, Christ, I think they go together. My favorite quote of this whole time. Okay, so the Toronto Star, not necessarily known for its conservative right, views, right. we could probably fairly say, yeah. said that a Christian church sponsoring an atheist minister is like Alcoholic Anonymous hosting a pub crawl. Yes! Right? That hits the nail right on the head. Yeah, we need to move on. Well, you know what? <laughs> We're seeing a lot of changes in culture. And, you know, I was with an Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, had like a leaders meeting, just talking about um, some of the challenges facing us as Christians and how can we kind of get together and talk about that and how to move forward and what do we need to change. And one of the things that we really talked about is that culture has changed. Mm -hmm. So our parents probably grew up in a culture that was mostly Christian and they could count it. They're, they're part of the majority. This was, you know, a country founded kind of by Christians who wanted their freedom to follow their faith. And a lot of people were Christians right. per se, or at least even culturally Christian Cultural, yes. would have identified that way. But basically all the studies are telling us that we have moved into now a post-Christian or even a secular culture. Mm. And as Christians, like Christians who follow Jesus, not cultural Christians, but people who really want to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. basically we're, we're a minority, mm. but we're people who are used to being a majority. And so, the, so they're kind of talking about how do we live now as a minority? It takes different skills yeah. to live as a minority in a culture that wants to shut us up, basically. Yeah. It doesn't want us to have a voice, even. Well, I mean, I feel that way all the time. Anytime we do speak about a certain issue, we're kind of, we're criticized for it. Um, we're seen as, you know, being intolerant. Like, there are all of these labels that come across when we do speak up, and that makes me feel like, yeah, we are a minority. You know, I was just speaking recently to a millennial who feels like there's no reason to even go to church. Yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I, I don't feel like I have to darken the door of a church. So, yeah, the, the Climate is changing, mm -hmm. and how do we? I, I how do we do that? Well, it's so fascinating because this article I read was written by John Stackhouse Jr. And he's been teaching young people, 25 year olds, mm -hmm. about the basics, or he's been young adults for 25 years, he says. Uh, even from church backgrounds, they, the people know very little about the Christian faith, he says, and understand mm -hmm. it even less. So again, almost that cultural Christianity, they might believe in Jesus and grew up in it, but they really don't even know 
what yeah. they believe necessarily when you really get down to brass tacks. And so one of his arguments that I read in this awesome article from Faith Today magazine is he's saying it's not just good enough to be nice now as a Christian. We need to understand that we live in a culture that has a different worldview mm. than us. We're the minority, so we've got to develop new skills to communicate. Maybe many people are telling us you shouldn't even be at the table, but they're saying we need to demand a place mm. at the table, not from a majority position, but actually just that we have a voice, that we're part of culture, that we're we're a welcome part of culture, even if we're different. And that we're re-educating people on what it means to be a Christian. I think that's what I'm hearing as well. Absolutely. Oh, this is good. This is a good conversation. 